Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life. We won't live in the past. We're making it last. It's time for another conversation. Welcome to Making It Last podcast, where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, but with other people. We're going to be having a conversation with Andrew Thorpe King. He is an author and he will tell us a little bit about his book shortly, but we're going to be unpacking what are the five rules of failure and why are they important? Welcome, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about your book before we unpack that. Yeah, sure. So for your audience, I'll just hold it up. The book is Failure Rules, The Five Rules of Failure for Entrepreneurs, Creatives, and Authentics. Uh, so, um, this book came out in 2022, towards the end of 2022, mm-hmm. began writing it though, back in 2014. So it was an off and on kind of, uh, you know, uh, ebb and flow of getting the project done, mm-hmm. uh, which served to be kind of, I think, um, uh, the best thing for the manuscript because life kind of happened over the course of the seven or eight years that I was writing it before it went into the year and a half of editing. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, you know, it really helped the text to mature and my perspectives, to change through lived experience over that time to really make the book what I think it was ought to be. Um, so the crux of the book really is um, this kind of understanding I came to in my 40s after after living my life in my 20s and my 30s, uh, very much ready, fire, aim, which I'm still a mm-hmm. proponent of to a certain degree, but I was probably way too, uh, you know, uh, over my skis in, in, in mm-hmm. a lot of, things. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, off-road entrepreneurial uh, adventuring, did many things in my 20s and 30s and you know, uh, owning two record labels that I still do today and, and, and starting those, working mm-hmm. in the music industry, working in banking and finance, professional bodybuilding, writing a yeah. spine up, all kinds of different things. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I, I kind of distilled a bunch of lessons from all those experiences that I thought were pertinent uh, for people to think about how to overcome obstacles, failures, uh, and roadblocks in their lives, particularly when they're going down difficult paths that might be unorthodox as an entrepreneur or a creative mm-hmm. or, just, or just someone living out their authentic life the, the best way they know how. Okay. Okay. All right. So then it's a nice segue then into what is the first rule of failure? Yeah, sure. So it's, you know, the book's distilled into the five rules. The first rule is failure purifies. So it's really the idea that, you know, the Phoenix must burn to emerge, right? That oftentimes, you know, we come across a, what we would maybe view as a failure event uh, mm-hmm. that has, you know, the component of chaos to it. And we see it as a disruption to our, of our plans, something that we didn't want in our lives, something that is automatically, uh, you know, uh, interpreted as, as bad. Uh, but I think I think oftentimes when those events happen in our lives, it behooves us to step outside of them, try to try to gain an objective third party perch uh, mm-hmm. to step out view them uh, with, with less emotion and to see, you know, what is happening here in the energy of this chaos uh, that might be for my benefit that I can shape to my benefit and widen, uh, you know, my suite of identities within my whole and how can I use this to become my next best self. Mm-hmm. Uh, and really, I think it's the idea that oftentimes failure does purify. It, uh, it wipes away, uh, you know, old thinking that needs to die. So new thinking can emerge. Mm-hmm. It crumbles old foundations. So stronger, better, more thoughtful ones can, can then be constructed uh, and I think it really helps helps us step into new skin if we choose to see it that way and interact with it that way. You literally answered what I was about to ask, which is why the word purify. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's so many other terms you could have used, but you literally just answered the question. So, go right on. <laughs> yeah, you did before I asked it. So, go on to number two. Yeah. So, number two is this idea. Failure rule, rule number two is nothing is safe. So just to step back a minute, like these rules are not rules like step one, step two, go do this and you're like, okay. okay, they're more like mindset guidelines, right? They're not hard, fast rules. They're not prescriptive. They're mm-hmm. just kind of like, you know, a, a set of ideas under these banners to think about as you, you know, uh, premeditatively try to uh, plan your life and figure out how you're going to, you know, metabolize, leverage and optimize mm-hmm. failures that might happen in the future and kind of build a labyrinth of contingency thoughts so that you're not caught by surprise. They don't blindside you and you're calm in the midst of them because you've already thought about how you're going to react and, and the different ways you might reinvent yourself if certain things might happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. So that's really kind of the idea. So failure number two is nothing is safe, which mm-hmm. actually comes from a quote 
from the great late rocker Lemmy <laughs> Kilmister from the band Motorhead, uh, okay. who's uh, bless his soul has passed away. But he was um, the Motorhead was set to play a show in the UK, uh, and then there was the terrorist attacks that happened in the UK at the Ariana Grande concert, and mm -hmm. so they came to the show, and and the press was interviewing, and they're asking him like, "Hey, you know, I know the authorities and the venue shut down the show, but would you have played if they let you?" And he said something to the effect of, "Yes, absolutely. Nothing is safe. We're, we're you know artificially obsessed with safety. Nothing is really safe." And so he kind of goes on this quote. So. From that quote, this idea, I had 27 chapters that flowed out of that in the book, mm -hmm. but it's really around the idea that, yes, obviously, we want to be as safe as possible. That's prudent. That makes sense. That's rational. But we do ultimately live in a very unsafe, unpredictable world. We're yeah. poor predictors of the future, although we ought to try to do it anyway to plan our lives. Uh, and, you know, it's this idea that because nothing is really safe, it really, I think, you know, benefits us to soul search and to figure out what are those pursuits really worthy of my life? And even, uh, if I can't, even if I can't do them full time because they're unsafe, how do I weave them into my life somehow into the tapestry of what I do? Because they're the ones most worthy of my life. Uh, because otherwise, if we're only bowing to safety, uh, we're probably dying inside a little bit. Almost like that Henry David Thoreau quote, mm. men live you know, a life of quiet desperation. And you want to avoid that. So it's like, OK, how do you still try to be as safe as possible in this unsafe world? But knowing it's unsafe, try to prioritize above safety. This notion of trying to identify and pursue and live out, uh, you know, what what it is that for you uniquely is truly worthy of your life, and yeah. that's different for everybody. But it's it's that idea. Do you think that can almost send people almost to the extreme, though? Yeah, and I caution against that, right? I mean, okay. you know, yeah. I mean, I talk about like. Hey, you really can't just go after your dreams, or your ideas as the crow flies, uh, which ties okay. in and I'll skip ahead just a little bit to failure rule number four, which okay. is build your thing one and thing two dependency, which is this idea like, hey, thing one is like an enabler pursuit. Build that first, something that mm -hmm. has a little more safety, even though nothing is safe, but a little more safety, mm -hmm. some scaffolding, some predictability, some structure. And then how can you use that uh, to then more safely go after your thing two or your aspirational North Star dream pursuit? Mm. And how do those two work together? And obviously, you know, there's a classic example of bang down a nine to five job and then side hustle your dream on the side, mm -hmm, right? That's mm -hmm. pretty, pretty simple. But I go through a bunch of more creative examples, more extreme examples that work really well. So there was these two brothers I knew uh, who uh, immigrated to the U.S. from Lebanon. And uh, they, you know, for them, their dream was to be business owners, right? To have kind of a variety of retail businesses. They didn't have any cash. So mm -hmm. the thing was, it was not to just go work a regular job. They went and worked for Disney on ice and they went on the road all year round for several years. They had no home. Uh, all their lodging and food was taken care of by Disney on ice. They were selling merchandise out of this truck every day, you know, to, to the parents of these little girls going to see Disney on ice. Mm -hmm. So they were able to, you know, bank all that money, all their wages, because they really didn't have any expenses. They lived very, you know, uh, modestly. And it was then that money that seeded their thing to enabler pursuit to, have you know a portfolio of, of retail uh, stores and they ended up owning gas stations, cigar lounges, gyms, nightclubs, all kinds of things in this one town over time. So it's like examples like that that I point to. You got to have a strategy. You can't just go yeah. straight up your dream and take out a huge bank loan or blow your savings and quit your job. Like you know there are you have mm -hmm. to like kind of build so, some sort of integrated plan with a waterfall backstop. Okay, hold on. You said that was four. What was three? Right. I did skip ahead. <laughs> right. Because I'm like, okay, so when did three drop in there? All right. So what, yeah, what yeah. three? Failure rule number three is money is spiritual. And it's this idea that, you know, there are these failure territories when we think about money that, you know, people often talk about money. They want they think of greed or they think of envy. I think envy and greed are kind of very similar. They're kind of like the, the malevolent twin siblings. Uh, but in the middle space, if you eschew envy and greed in those, those failure territories, I think money primarily, even though it's an agnostic tool, mm -hmm. uh, it does have spiritual power, right? It really is a thank you note uh, where we're kind of placing placing measured thankfulness mm -hmm. uh, with every transaction uh, for a good or service. And, uh, you know, I think money really has the power when seen that way uh, to bless others, to be a force mm -hmm. multiplier uh, of, of improvement uh, and to, uh, you know, help us kind of get out of poverty, Right. If we're working on ways that we can utilize our, our, our skills and our talents and our relationships 
uh, in service of others, right? Mm -hmm. It's not always only one, right? There's corruption in the world. Yeah. Greed still exists. Envy mm -hmm. still exists. All these other forces that go against that still exist. But when it's possible uh, to use it in that way, I think it can actually be uh, something that is, is, is spiritual. It's really, uh, you know, a, a measure of gratitude uh, and, and gratefulness. My name is Andrew Thorpe King, the author of Failure Rules. You are listening and watching the Making It Last podcast with Noreen Daly. You can't live your best life without a healthy immune system. Boost your immune system the delicious way with Zappi's organic juices and punches. Made from local produce with zero added sugar, our juices cleanse and revitalize your body as they boost your natural immunity. Try our delicious flavors. Beat it, berry bomb, get fresh, ton up, and island splash. Find us on Instagram at Zappi's Organics or call or send a WhatsApp message at 1-876-779 8910 to order today. That's 18767798910. Zappi's organic juices and punches. Live your best life today. created a network that is not to be taken lightly. Does your business lack branding and having difficulty realizing your vision? Look no further. Splint Brand Design Consultancy specializes in developing personal and business brands. Services include strategic management, website creation, social media branding, and more. Visit them online at www.wearesplint.com. Splint, the branch you need to succeed. Welcome back to the Making It Last podcast with Noreen Daly. My name is Andrew Thorpe King, your guest today. Why was money included? Well, let's face it. We all got to deal with it. It exists. <laughs> it's how we get through the world. Okay. Uh, you don't want to worship it. You don't want to revile it either. You got to find some sort of middle ground where you have a healthy relationship with it. Mm -hmm. And so I try to frame that in that, in, in that, you know, kind of spiritualized, uh, you know, uh, framework. Mm -hmm. And I, for me, I had found that, you know, not envying those who did better for me, not looking down upon those at certain times that might've been doing worse than me, mm -hmm. uh, real superpower for me. It enabled me in relationships. It enabled me to have empathy and gratitude, it enabled me to have drive and grit and all those good characteristics. And ultimately that did lead to the reward of more money. Oh. Right. And so I think that money is spiritual in that sense. Okay. All right. You had skipped four. So I guess, where you, well, you, you yeah, actually went, skipped the four. So no, we're at five. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so number five. This kind of rounds them out. It's failure rule. Number five is you are not your failure. So it's this idea that, you need to decouple your identity from your failure event. So many people have some failure event that might be even near catastrophic. It might be an mm -hmm. ethical failure, it might be a big financial failure in their lives where they're, you know, up high at one point and then they're, you know, rags to, you know, mm -hmm. riches to rags, you know, the other direction. Um, and, um, you know, they take it as their identity. And it's this idea that like you need to diversify your identities. You need to have one capitalized I identity that is spiritual, that is, um, you know, uh, resilient towards change, resilient mm -hmm. towards uh, the different ways you show up in the world, the different things that happen to you. And then you have a series of temporary small I identities that weave in and out of your life. You can't be attached yeah. to them, right? Uh, you can you can leverage them, uh, be passionate about them, but not be attached because they're going to change throughout time. Uh, and so same thing with a, a failure event in your life. It doesn't mean that it won't be you know hard or you might be emotional in the midst of it because tagline of the book is after it sucks, failure rules. But mm -hmm. you need to get through that, decouple your identity from it, know that every day is a new day that you can reschedule your life. 
and uh, figure out how to reinvent yourself and keep moving forward uh, without having that unnecessary burden of, of seeing yourself through the lens of what, what you might have did in the past or what might have happened to you in the past, right? So, you know, I go through a bunch of examples in the book of this, but mm -hmm. one of them, um, this uh, gentleman named Elgin James, um, he actually is the half brother to Jocko Willink, the ex Navy SEAL, who's a popular podcaster. But Elgin, um, he was, uh, uh, you know, at one time he was the leader of a violent street gang. It was a subculture of the hardcore punk rock scene in New England, and he was, uh, you know, in this gang that really uh, exalted clean living. So they were mm -hmm. straight at, they didn't do drugs, they didn't smoke, they didn't drink, that kind of stuff. But then they became very kind of militant, and they were beating up you know, uh, kids at these punk rock shows that uh, didn't toe the line and it got a really dark kind of uh, trajectory. And so he's on kind of a bad path. Uh, he eventually ended up getting arrested on an extortion charge. Uh, and, uh, you know, on the day of his sentencing for prison, he had already been working on turning his life around and had already decoupled his identity from, from that mm -hmm. gang -like identity uh, and pursued his, his highest meaning, which to him was the talent of screenwriting. He moved to L.A., became a, a, a mentee of Robert Redford. And on the day of his sentencing, there was a juxtaposition, juxtaposition of his old life and his new life. Hmm. He literally was being sentenced the same day he got to deal with Universal Pictures, right? Wow. And he talked about that, uh, you know, in court, how this was like the symbol of his old life and his new life all merging together. Mm -hmm. But he successfully, you know, uh, moved on and didn't tie himself to that old identity, uh, did his time, uh, and he became a, a successful screenwriter. He was the writer for... Uh, Mayans MC, which was a spinoff to the popular series uh, Sons of Anarchy that was on FX, and mm -hmm. he's done many other things since then. So it's stories like that that I kind of talk about how people are able to, you know, rise out of old identities into new identities, uh, out of that failure into reinvention uh, and uh, continue to widen who they are in the world. If it is that you had to pick one that you think would be the most important one, which one would that be? Of the five? That's really tough. I would say... It's tied between the first and the second, but um, mm. I think the second is what, or, or excuse me, the first and the fifth, uh, the one I just mentioned, You Are Not Your Failures. But I think You Are Not Your Failures is really one that trips people up the most. People get hung up on that and they just die in it. I mean, I actually know of a, a, a friend recently who had gone through a divorce and had a number of things that went wrong in his life. And he, he uh, stumbled into deep alcoholism and never had a problem with it in the past and just passed away from alcohol. Uh, and I think a lot of that is he couldn't get out of uh, the shock of his life being turned inside out and the identity disruption of that. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't find his way into a new identity because he was viewing himself in such a way that prevented forward movement. So I really think that failure rule number five is just super important uh, to see ourselves as resilient spiritual beings uh, that could go in and out of mm -hmm. mistakes and failures and missing the mark and can find our way back into flourishing. What do you think, though, can be done? Because I think even you grow up, and especially in 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 a school setting, you're you 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 socialize so much and cultured so much that you know if you get F, you yeah. know it is it, it's such a big deal and it's such yeah. I remember yeah. I got an F, but <laughs> yeah. What do you think? And I use that because I think more than any other context in school, you're socialized to think that you really should avoid mm -hmm. Fs. And I'm not going to say I'm trying to flip that script. But how can we, even in that context and otherwise in the wider society, help people to just change that mindset to say that, yes, failure is not the end and your your identity really isn't tied up into when you fail in any aspect, whether, you know, small or big things, so to speak? Yeah, that's a good question, because I think that's a real hard part, because there's an institu institutionalization yeah. on the stigma of failure, mm -hmm. and you have to individually overcome that, because you can't always change that. You can have a boss, you can have a teacher, mm -hmm. you can have whatever, that isn't going to change their view on you just because you decided not to hold on to uh, the perception of mm -hmm. some event that you failed on. So it's really up to you to just keep going and really leverage this quote I use in the book by Leo Tolstoy, which is the best solution is to ignore the opinions of others uh, and be kind and good while you ignore the opinions of others. Right. So it's like mm. 
I'm going to ignore that opinion that you still have of me. I'm still going to be kind and good to you. But internally, I'm going to rise above this and I'm going to find new ways to create new evidence that separates me from my past. And that takes uh, internal strength. That's an internal locus of control. It's not a whole lot you can do about what's going on on the outside uh, and the perceptions there. You got to deal with your own perceptions of yourself and have your actions follow suit there. And over time, let that evidence rebuild up to a new conclusion. And that's difficult, but, and, and you have to, you know, you have to kind of be punk rock about it. Kind of almost have yeah. to like softly flip the bird to those who might see you in a certain way. Yeah. 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 As, as we're wrapping up, what is, you've said a lot and I know it's going to resonate with a lot of people, but what if, if they forget everything you've said and there's one idea that you want to resonate with them, Andrew, what would that one idea be from this conversation? Um, yeah, I think the, the main idea would be, again, you are not your failures. Uh, you are not, uh, you know, the subset of your current identities. Uh, you have an identity with a capital I that is higher than all of that. Uh, you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. Remember that. Remember that uh, you can move through these temporal roadblocks and failures uh, and identity shifts, and you can always reinvent and continue to move along in your calling journey uh, to endeavor to discover your best application and manifestation in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. This was Making It Last podcast, where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves, with other people. I'm Noreen Daly. Until next time. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for